Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's last segment of War Stories on the Veteran Talk Show. My name is Ryan Smeltz, and today we are talking about AIT. I'm going to talk to you first about the classroom. Uh, so basically, while we were in basic training, we did go to the classroom a little bit. A lot of it was death by PowerPoint, as we like to call it. And I distinctly remember uh, one day it was just a bunch of admin stuff. I One of the classes, uh, just one small portion of it was sharp training, which is sexual harassment, uh, assault response prevention. Uh, I think I remember that correctly. Uh, but basically, we were in a classroom for probably eight to 10 hours. And they would give you, well, we had our one court or two court canteens with us. We would have to keep it full. We would drink water the whole time. So every 50 minutes to an hour, they would give us a bathroom break. And then you have to cycle through 130 people, 200 people through a, a single bathroom. One thing was kind of funny that the drill sergeants did is as soon as the females who were obviously uh, somewhat more few than, uh, than the males, once they were done using the bathroom, the drill sergeants would check the bathroom, block it off, and then uh, start cycling the males through that bathroom so they could get us through quicker. And it never failed, you know, once an hour, they would get, we would get a bathroom break and everybody had to pee because we were doing nothing but drinking water the whole time. And uh, one time, uh, I can't remember who, I think, I think somebody in my row fell asleep or something and they made the whole row get up and bear crawl around the classroom and there was this drill sergeant in the back of the classroom uh drill drill sergeant uh, mallard i believe was his name i could have that wrong but he was he was a big dude and he was just sitting in the back of the classroom he was making us do the bear crawl and i came around and he said something to me to the effect of, what do you have to say, Smeltz? And I said, uh, something like, sorry, drill sergeant. And he said, oh, so now I'm a sorry drill sergeant. Keep going. So that's when I learned that you never apologize to a drill sergeant. But in advanced individual training, the classroom setting changed a little bit in a sense that they might let you do stuff like get up and go to the bathroom whenever you had to go. The number one rule the entire time in basic and AIT was you don't fall asleep. And we got extremely creative. So uh, me personally, I would stand up and go to the back of the room, maybe knock out some push-ups, keep the blood flowing and stay awake. Some people would get the caffeine pills from the shopette when we got a pass. Uh, and they would take those. Um, some people would put hand sanitizer or hot sauce on their fingertips and then rub it under their eyes. Uh, I think that was a little extreme. I never, never really tried that one. Definitely try the caffeine pills as they gave you a jolt. Um, but in these classes, because obviously we're in AIT now, so we're learning how to become MPs. So it's everything from classes on COPS, which was the Centralized Operations Police Suite, um, which I'm pretty sure they don't even use that anymore. Uh, law classes, uh, so going deep into <clears throat> the Manual for Courts Martial, MCM or UCMJ. Um, and, you know, just breaking down the logistics behind stuff even if it was like you know how to respond to a traffic accident how to respond to a domestic before they had us do the practical portion uh and go through the motions they would teach us a class on it and that's where we were in class all day every day uh it seemed um, of course, we were marching there. Of course, when we arrived and they released us, we would run 
up to the entrance of the building. Inside the building, we were to stand in line and wait and not block doors uh, up against one side of the hallway or the other. And I remember one time we were in that hallway and, you know, I, I didn't know what a commission officer was. Um, I was still learning that you call them sir or ma'am. And I got stopped by, I think, a lieutenant colonel, and he was asking me some questions. And I didn't really pay attention to his rank. Um, obviously, it's subdued and on the collar in BDU, so it's a little hard to see. And, you know, a major is the gold leaf and the lieutenant colonel is the subdued one. So uh, I, I didn't know, and I called him sergeant. Uh, he didn't say anything because he didn't really care, and I'm a trainee, so who am I? And he kept going, but a drill sergeant overheard it and about smoked the dog crap out of me afterwards, so that was pretty exciting. Uh, but in these classes, they had so many different branches, uh, Army, Air Force, civilians, and Marines instructing the classes because they would be maybe the subject matter experts. So the reason I bring this up is because for one of the classes, they had a gunnery sergeant teaching it. And if you've never been in a room full of trainees or full of a bunch of lower enlisted, when they have to address someone of a higher rank, the army has a tendency to do what he called singing. And that is, we would say yes or no, and then sergeant. But as a group, it turned into yes, sergeant. And he didn't like that. So he specifically said, number one, no singing. Number two, it's gunnery sergeant. So he said, when you address me, you will address me as gunnery sergeant, no singing. Uh, so that was very difficult for a group of us to overcome. But he made sure to put it to a stop. Uh, and most of these classes that I'm talking about took place at a place called STEM Village. So it's basically a village set up on Fort Leonard Wood. If you've been there, been through MP school, or if you were a drill sergeant at the MP school, then you know exactly where I'm talking about. And we would arrive there and there would be a building and we'd go in and sit in a classroom. And then for the practical portion of the <clears throat> whatever whatever thing we were going through so if we were learning traffic accidents then we went into the classroom and learned the traffic accidents and then usually the second half of the day we would go out and do the practical portion so stem village was set up so that we could basically practice whatever we had just learned so i remember when we learned riot control, then they had us go out and draw out uh, riot gear, uh, the shields and the batons and the knee pads and uh, all that stuff and put it on. And then we had to practice the different formations and the different commands. So uh, that, that was all right. I think some of my favorite ones were when we learned stuff like domestics. Uh, because we actually got to pretend to respond as MPs in a car and we would have to learn how to separate the two people, um, you know, responding to uh, one of the houses in STEM Village set up uh, very similar to how an on-base uh, housing would be set up. So uh, that is a peek into advanced individual training. Uh, next week, uh, we might get into the Humvee training, uh, the uh, end of uh, advanced individual training, and I'll tell you uh, basically how I got recycled. Um, so tune in next week. Hopefully, you are finding this entertaining. If you are, even if you're not, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Most importantly, tell your friends to subscribe as well. My name is Ryan Smeltz, 
and I will see you on next week's episode of War Stories.